So in this video, I'm going to explain Shopify markets so you understand what this feature is, why it matters and when to use it. So if you click on markets, you can see your active markets. And right now I only have the Netherlands active for this store. So if we go to the checkout page of my store, so this is the cart page. If we click the checkout button here for this particular product, I and anyone else trying to order a product in this store will only see the Netherlands as the available country. If someone is from another country, they cannot complete the checkout right now. And that alone gives you a good idea of what markets are. In short, markets are directly connected to your Shopify checkout process if you don't activate a specific country or region in your market so this is my markets area as you can see the Netherlands only the Netherlands is active if you don't activate other countries or regions people from that area cannot place an order in your store so for example if we click on the Netherlands market here and we can include another country here for example let's say we add Belgium here I'm gonna select Belgium and I'm gonna click on done and I'm gonna click on save so now if we go back to the checkout process and if we refresh refresh this page you can now see that customers from Belgium can also check out so you get the idea and one more important thing to know when you first sign up for Shopify you start with one market active by default so for example I'm from the Netherlands so my primary market is the Netherlands when I first signed up for Shopify so again in a nutshell what are markets and why should you use them they allow people from other countries or regions to complete the checkout in your store obviously there's more to markets than only that but that's the foundation basically so to create a new market, you're going to click on markets and then you're going to go to the top right corner and click on create market. And aside from my primary market, which is the Netherlands, I also want to sell to people in the UK. So again, right now, if we check out only people in the Netherlands and Belgium, that's the other country we just added, are able to check out from my store. So I'll create a separate market and name it UK. And then I'm going to click on add condition to add the UK. I'm going to search for United Kingdom and I'm going to select it and I'm going to click on done and then I'm going to click on save. So again, this addition to my settings in my Shopify store will result in having the UK in this list too. If I refresh the page, so let's refresh the page and now we can select the UK as well. So that's the foundation of adding a market to your Shopify store, but there is more to it. So when your new market uses a different currency than your local one, so my native market was the Netherlands, they use the Euro, the UK uses the British pound. As you can see, the currency is now added here. And if we click this icon over here, we can see some settings here. So you can round it up to the nearest pound, or you can say, I do not want to round prices. And for the exchange rate, because we have the Euro, and then we have the British pound, we can use a dynamic exchange rate Instead of manual, I advise you to do that. So these settings are by default, so I'm not gonna change anything. I'm gonna click on cancel, so this is fine. So next we have catalogs. So if someone is browsing my European website from the UK, so they would normally see prices in euros. So if we go to my store, now the native currency is euros, as you can see, but the native currency in the UK is pounds. And to give the UK visitors a more personalized experience, I can change the default currency for this market to pounds. And to do that, we're gonna click the plus icon over here at catalogs. I'm gonna click the plus icon here. I'm gonna click on create the catalog and you can also find the catalogs over at markets and then you're going to click on catalogs and here we can set the prices in british pounds so it's the setting by default and here i can also adjust the prices for uk visitors if i want so i can decrease or increase the prices by a specific percentage and over here i can also exclude specific products so let's say if i can't ship a certain product to the uk for example i could exclude that product from 
from the UK store alone. And that's what you can do inside the catalog feature. So firstly, I'm going to click on save. And now let's say as an example, I want to exclude this specific product from the UK store. I'm going to select this product and I'm going to say exclude from catalog, exclude the product. And now as you can see, we have three products included in the UK store and one product excluded. So to go back to markets, we're going to click here on markets and here we can go back to the UK market. So now as you can see, we have customized two things. So the currency, which was added by default, and then we have the catalog, which we just added. But there is more. We also have the theme customization option. So another cool thing is that you can completely customize your website for that specific market. So for example, the UK market. So for example, you can highlight unique selling points, for example, on your homepage or on your product pages specifically for an entire market. So for example, the UK market, you can showcase different products than your default market, as we just did with uh, excluding a product. But we can also, for example, add a specific banner, for example, for the UK market market alone. And to do so, you can do that over here at online store and you're going to click the plus icon here. And here you can add some theme customization. You're going to click here on theme customization. And now as you can see, we have a setting over here. We have the UK store and we have the store default. So for example, if I change the text here at the UK store, so let's say I'm going to change this text to UK, just as an example that you see it works, I'm going to click on save. And now if we go back to the default store, if we click store default, you can see this headline now changes. And this is obviously just one example, but you can just tweak the entire hero section of your website or entire product for your product templates. And then over here, you can see that icon over here. If I hover over it, it disappears. But you can see that, right? That green thing. That means you have something in this section specifically tweaked for that market. And again, you can do that for the product pages too. Like if we click on the default product page. So now we're in the UK store. And the reason it says page not found is because we excluded this specific product. So it's just a coincidence that this specific product is the preview product. So if we change the preview product to let's say this product, and now it should work as you can see. So this is the UK product page. So and here we can tweak the USPs here to make it relevant for the UK market. So now I'm going to click on exit. And as you can see, we now have have the online store added to the customization tab over here. We have two more things to go here. So over here at domain and language, you have the option to display that particular market on an entirely different URL or subdomain. And you can also go with a completely different top level domain. So for example, let's say my local market, as in this example, is the Netherlands and I want to expand to the UK. I could also use a .co.uk domain for the UK market. Or for simplicity, I can also just choose to use a subdomain. So you're going to click the plus icon here. And then here you can see the primary domain. And then over here, we can add a subfolder. And as you can see, it already gives a suggestion for the subfolder. And if you click on done right now, now we added that domain as well for the UK market, we have to click on save. And as I mentioned before, you can also use different top level domains for different markets. So I have a specific lesson on this in my free Shopify course. There's a link down below in the description to the course. There's a link to this Shopify help page, show international domains. And here Shopify explains how it works with different top level domains. So if we go back to the domain and language, we have one more setting we didn't look at yet. So if we click here on the domain and language settings, you can click on add languages. And here we can see the Dutch language. And let's say this is the default language I can tweak it to set as default since the main market for my store is the Netherlands. And then if I click the three dots here, I can change the English language for the UK market. I'm going to click on localize. And now I can tweak all the product titles, the descriptions, the product options. And I suggest if you want to do this, use ChatGPT to translate your product descriptions, etc. And you have to do that for every single product. Then there is also the collection pages. And then over here at the top navigation, you can visit specific sections over here. So for example, blog posts. So there are no blog posts in this Shopify store yet. But if there were, they would have been listed here. And then you can translate them to, to English and similar to the pages, the policies, etc. I'm going to click on exit. 
And then over here, we have taxes and duties. So if we click the plus icon here, you have some tax options. But around taxes, I want to mention something. So in this example, we're focusing on the UK taxes. But just so you know, there are EU taxes, US taxes, uh, there is EU VAT, import duties like DDP and DDU, all complicated terms, but there is also a lot more. So I can't really give you a one size fits all answer here because honestly, 90% of this stuff depends on your unique situation. It all comes down to things like where you're based, which countries you sell to, whether you exceed certain sales thresholds in other countries or states. So what I recommend you do is visit this specific URL on Shopify's website. And it's basically the main resource with links to all relevant tax information. And once you've read all the relevant information on the Texas Shopify page for your situation, I recommend joining the Shopify Reddit community and searching for your specific situation. So for example, if you're in the EU selling to other EU countries, search for related keywords in the subreddit. And if you still have doubts or want to be 100% sure you're doing everything correctly, hire a local tax professional who specializes in e-commerce in your country or region. Or start with posting your question in the subreddit group. So if you want to be absolutely sure everything works properly, use a VPN and connect with an IP address from the country you want to test. So this way you can see exactly how your site looks and how the checkout process works for that particular market. So my last words before you go, visit robinsnewsletter.com to get instant access to my free Shopify course.